Hey there, this is Vanessa DeBerlay, and today we're going to go over six email marketing metrics that you want to watch in your autoresponder with your email marketing system. Before we get started, let's go over really fast what email marketing is. For those of you that really aren't sure, maybe you're just getting started and you wanted to check out what metrics you should look at, but you don't have a system yet. Um, basically, an email marketing system is something that every business should have. It's been around for years. Years ago, before we had the internet, email marketing happened with mail, snail mail. People would get mail, uh, junk mail, and in there, there would be from different companies that maybe you signed up with and they keep sending you mail and basically they're building a relationship with you if you keep getting mail from somebody two or three times a month you're like you know you start expecting it right um so we're going to talk about some of the metrics that you want to look at in your email system to see if your customer is getting the mail and if it's being effective, okay? But before we start, let's just go over very quickly what a system looks like, an email marketing system. I have two little graphs here because they kind of play together. But up here, this is you on social media. You're on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn or YouTube and you're promoting something for free. And we call that a lead magnet. That's why I like this picture down here you're you've got something that people are like wow I want that I want that 10 tips on how to lose weight or I want that checklist on how to set up my YouTube channel so that person is is willing to give you their email address for that free product and it could be a checklist a PDF an ebook it doesn't have to be anything complicated people like things to be simple anyway so here they give you their email address you send the free thing now they're in your email sequence yes it takes time to set it up but it stays there it's automated and it just starts working itself and that's why it takes time to set up your business and put these systems in place but once you do the work and they're in place you just go back and tweak them every once in a while so here I have my email sequence set up and what's happening is I'm emailing people and they're getting to see me once a week or twice a week whatever you have set up you want to be consistent so they know what to expect and they're going through what we call a funnel basically they're getting to know you to like you and to trust you where eventually they're gonna to want to buy something from you so you're not gonna start right out the gate with hey buy this they're you're going to push people away. So you've, you've got to warm them up, if that makes sense. So that's what we're talking about. Now, you've got your sequence in place and you've got some people that have been going through. Now you want to start looking at some metrics to see, okay, how do I want to improve this? So there is data avail available to you. And usually it's right in the autoresponder that you're using. I'll pull up my um, active campaign on one of these. All right. So the first thing I want to look at is open rate. Open rate, some autoresponders will have an open rate by the hour. So you can see when are people more likely to open up my um, emails. And in this example, you can see the chart. You know, this is AM, it's early morning. So there are people opening it. It could be people from overseas. Um, but you're seeing some kind of a sequence of when people are opening your emails. Now, let me go ahead and show you on my autoresponder. Um, how it how it pops up I want to apologize too for my froggy voice today I've I've lost my voice like for 10 days now it's actually doing pretty good so I apologize for that I don't normally sound so rough and gruff so um, it is what it is right um, anyway I'm in my um, active campaign and I went under automations and then I'm gonna just hit this view email button okay and this is my what, what I call my soap opera sequence but if I slide over here I've got four emails in there I can see my open rate so basically if I send to a hundred people and 20 of them open the email that's 20 percent and which isn't too bad um, usually you want your uh, open rates to be 14 to 27 percent which is pretty good now you'll see people that'll have 65 percent you know phenomenal open rates that's great but if you can fall in between 14 and 27 you're not doing too badly um so that's basically in active campaign what it looks at it's that simple you just go into your automations hit emails it lists all the emails that you sent out in this particular automation and then you have all your rates right there so you can very very quickly um, see what those rates look like now you might think well what do i do um 
I do have other emails. I have a whole playlist where I talk about things you can do to improve your open rates and things like that. But I wanted to give you a little tidbit here to help you. Some of the reasons people open emails is one, that number one, 69% will open an email because they see their name. Think about it. I have found myself in situations where um, I might hand somebody a charge card, like at a restaurant, and they'll bring it back and they'll say, thank you, Vanessa. And I'm like, whoa, how'd they know my name? It does make you perk up and you know what they're doing, uh, but it works. So even in emails, people like to see their name. I have found myself doing that. You'll have your email list and I'll say, hey, Vanessa, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, okay, I'm going to open that because my name's there. Another reason right here is the subject line, 47% open because of the subject line. It has to be catchy. It has to evoke curiosity. Maybe you're asking a question, but whatever you're saying in that subject line is making them want to click it and open it. Now, uh, you have about 26% of people will off, uh, open it because there's an offer in there. So maybe in your headline, you say there's a free blah, blah, blah. And they're like, I want to go in there and see what that is. And the next two there, you know, there's, um, the intro paragraph, maybe that um, sometimes when you put that heading in there, they, they can start seeing your um, email, that, that intro paragraph, and there might be something in there that catches them. And then after that, maybe they just know you write short emails. Now, I have one person that I love getting her email. It comes about once a week. It's not very often. And she is very lengthy. She's a great storyteller. And I love to read her emails. I've never bought anything. Um, she does a lot of, uh, sells a lot of, of things that, I just can't use in my business, but I love to read her stories. I love her style of writing and I'll sit there and read it. And in a, in a way it's helping teach me maybe to become a better story writer myself, but there, there's different things that make people open the emails. All right, let's go to metric number two. You also want to check the click through rate. So the click through rate is somebody might click through the email. So just because somebody opens it, they can open it, see that it's short or long, or they might scan whatever they see and leave. Click through is more they're going to actually be in there and scrolling and looking at things. And again, it's the number of clicks divided by the delivered emails and that times 100, that gets your percent. So if you have 20 clicks, send 100 emails, 20% click through rate. You definitely want a higher click through rate. So if your click through rate isn't high, Ask yourself, somebody opened it, maybe I I, call, I got them to open it because of their name was on there because I had a great subject line. Why aren't they going through? And you're gonna have things in there. I always have something for them to click as they go through. I might send them to my YouTube video. I might have a video in there for them to click and open. I might have a link for them to go to, but I always have something in there for people to do. And that's gonna help that click-through rate go up or something catchy has to be in there to, to, get the, to entice them to wanna open it. All right, let's go to the next one, conversion rate, number three. This is the percentage of people who bought a product or service from you after clicking through the email. So you may find, like earlier, I showed you my soap opera sequence. I don't have anything in there that I'm trying to sell. That's kind of my introduction a series of emails to get people to know me. And after that, then I start warming them up. Then I start trickling in some things that I want to try to sell or offer. And this is where you go through the funnel. Um, you have that lead magnet. They come through, they give you their email address and you warm them up. And then some of them, and usually you're convinced conversion rate is not going to be as obviously as high as your click through rate and your conversion rate. Um, somebody was telling me I was reading actually uh, going through a different video and they were saying to sell a high ticket item, you're talking one out of every thousand. So think about that. Now you might think, Oh my gosh, that's not even worth it. Well, that's why you want to build up a huge email list. You want to have a lot of subscribers and it's a numbers game. So your conversions will be higher. So for every thousand, if you get a thousand dollar sale, that's great if you have 20 or 30,000 people in your email list. So it's all about the numbers. In the beginning, you'll grow slow, but everybody does, right? Everybody starts from zero, but that's how you're going to get your conversion rates up is get a higher number of emails in there and then get them through where you warm them up and they will buy your offers. All right. Bounce rate. Bounce rates are basically people come in, they leave and it's, um, they click out without even interacting anywhere. They just kind of 
look around and they pop back out. A lot of times, um, if you look at this, I thought this was interesting and that's why I put it here. You want to think about the industry that you're in and where your list is. For instance, on a blog page, some people try to get people to click into their email list from the blog page because that's where they're creating the offer. That's why this is important. Maybe not off of YouTube or off of Facebook or anything. They want to, and, and the blog page, many people, not a high percentage of people stick around. So there is a high bounce rate. People want to see it. Um, they want to do something and then get out. That's why sales funnels tend to be more successful in collecting emails than blogs because on a sales page, there's not a lot of busyness on there. There's one thing, click this, give me your email address, let's move on. And they tend to have um, lower bounce rates. But this just gives you an idea of the different sites and the bounce rates. Now these are six different reasons possibly an email might bounce. Maybe there's, um, there isn't, it's, it's not a real email address. Uh, maybe it's undeliverable. Uh, maybe the mailbox is full and it bounced back. Uh, maybe somebody's on vacation. There's an auto reply in there. Maybe it's blocked. Maybe you're blocked on somebody's list or maybe there's a different reason. It Maybe it went to spam or something like that. But there's different ease, reasons that they bounce besides the fact that people just open them and don't do anything with them. But they this is basically, um, you might want to look into some things like this. Now, I know um, when you start getting a huge number of emails, obviously the cost of your autoresponder it's going to go up in relation to how many email addresses you have. You can go in and run the metrics. And if you have somebody's name, maybe you have 10 different people in there that have a, a, a bounce rate that they're bounced, they're not getting open, just delete them from your list because obviously there's some kind of a problem in there, whether it's them not opening it or there's another problem. You don't want to start be paying for emails that aren't going to um, give you any uh, return on your investment. And then we have um, number five, a subscribe rate. How, what is my subscribe rate? Like, what are the different things that I'm doing to drive people into my email list and how many are subscribing from different sources? You can go in and run a metrics on your autoresponder and every time you bring somebody in from different sources, you can tag them and you can start looking at, oh, I have more people subscribing with this offer that I had over here on Instagram. Uh, over here, I had another offer on LinkedIn. I'm not getting any subs subscriptions, so maybe I'll just get rid of that. So you want to keep looking at your data. And these are just some ideas of where you can get people to subscribe. And of course, the last metric you want to look at is your unsubscribe rate. Do you notice that on your 10th email in your sequence that a lot of people are starting to unsubscribe? Maybe you had really high... Um, rates in the beginning like you're going to have a, a, a sequence of emails and and your open rate was maybe like you saw earlier i had 20 percent, 25 percent, 15 percent. maybe by my 10th email in my sequence i'm noticing that that percent that open rate is going down and maybe i notice people are starting to unsubscribe so I can say, okay, I'm doing something wrong in between this point and this point. Go back, look at those emails and tweak them to try to get those rates to come back up. So hopefully this was helpful for you. There's just some different metrics that you want to watch in your email autoresponder. Again, I have a link below. Make sure you check out these um, the playlist that I have below up above here and a couple of other emails that will help you um, as you build your email. Um, you can increase your open rates and then I have 10 compelling offers. You want to make sure you have great offers, which is going to help people uh, help your conversion um, in the end. So check them out. And before you leave, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I promise you, hopefully by the next time you listen to my next video, my voice will be back, but we have to carry on, right? <laughs> so again, thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing to my channel and I will see you on the next 